a scene far from certain. You want to go for a ride my Porsche? From a one-time role on Sex in the City. You know what? I got to go home. No way. I'm not letting you out. <laughs> my shirt didn't have enough uh, ice cream on it. <laughs> to his recurring one on Aliens, bit parts in movies. But it all changed six years ago. To a night the four of us will never forget. With The Hangover. How does one go from The Hangover movies to these very serious, in part, dark characters in some way? Well, um, I don't see any difference at all. Huh? I don't. I mean, uh, Phil, Phil Winnick, to me, was a real character that wasn't me. Mm. Tracy, it's Phil. Phil, where the hell are you guys? And uh, Todd Phillips is an auteur director, and Zach Galifianakis and Ed Helms are as good as Christian Bale and Jeremy Renner. I mean, those guys are serious gangster actors. I mean, they are no joke, and you got to bring it hard every time you're with them. So I actually see it as, a, as the same thing. How you doing, Mr. De Niro? My name is Bradley Cooper. Uh, my question is regarding awakenings. I was, I wanted desperately to ask a question. I was terrified. <laughs> and I wanted to ask this specific random question about um, awakenings. And right before it came to my, because you have to say it before the once when they pass you the mic, so I, I, I thought, oh, this is going to be a stupid question. And he's going to say, why would you ask that stupid question? <laughs> and, and, and so I thought, I'll just ask some bullshit question about the mission and riding a horse. <laughs> And then, and then somebody went up and asked a question about the mission right before I, wow. my question. I thought, oh no! And the next thing I know, it's my turn. I'm standing up and I'm looking at my idol across, you know, 40, 30 feet away. And then I just asked the question that I wanted to about awakenings, and and he said, "Good question." Mm. Uh, and and it like blew me away. And I thought oh, it was just a little reminder of like, you know, what? just go with your gut. You know, there's a reason why you think the way you do and, and, and want to do the things you do and you just can't let anybody tell you don't do it. But especially you. Don't allow you to tell you not to do it. Mm. You know, the, the loudest voice uh, that, that's a contrarian is usually me. And um, it, you know, all these little moments of confirmation that that voice should just shut up um, allows you to just do what you're supposed to do while you're here. Mm. <laughs> Between those. Absolutely, I, I, I try to find different things for no other reason than um, to further explore. You know, I, I have no desire to repeat anything, um, and I want to constantly learn. Now, I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm very lucky right now, and it won't last forever. It may not last another year. But to be really at a place where, you know, it's not just about, uh, you know, because for a while, it was just I just got to get a job, and now it, you know, for as long as it lasts, it's like, wow, able to, you know, read a book, like American Sniper, and then try to produce it, and 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 go to a director like Clint Eastwood. I mean, these are things that, uh, if you told me that as a young actor in grad school, I would, it's, you got to be joking. Um, but that said, you know, I remember being on Alias, and I was playing this character who was, you know, only good. It felt like, and. And I remember feeling like I, I got to play something else and, and really being so grateful that I got the role in Wedding Crashers where he was so diametrically opposed to that character. And I thought early on, like, don't, you know, really keep trying to go here and here. And I used to, I used to, I always remember Willem Dafoe came to our school and talked about how he only takes roles that scare him. And I remember thinking, or, or, roles that scare him, roles that he thinks he can't do. And I thought like, oh, well, I think I would only want to do things that I thought I could do. And, and, and. It was interesting that I used to think that, and, and now it's more like things that scare me. I mean, Chris Kyle, if you told me I could have played him, I, I didn't. Even when we were developing, I thought, well, I'll just develop the material and tell the studio that I'll play him, but really I won't play him. I'll get some, another actor who I thought would have been perfect for it. Uh, honestly, yeah. And, um, and, and Phil with The Hangover, it was funny because you mentioned that because we were talk, saying that I saw it last night, and I was telling my friend, I thought, you know, Looking at that guy then, I was so the opposite of that guy because I was going to give up the business. I was doing a play at Williamstown, and I thought, I just can't, it's not going to be, it's not going to happen because I knew that I only wanted to really be in the middle of storytelling. I really wanted, I love making a movie. I don't love just acting, but I love the whole thing. And then Todd Phillips called me and said, or emailed me and said, let's do this, bitches. <laughs> and, and, then, and, so, and then we were filming it, and... Uh, and I remember, and Phil's like this very confident guy. And I was at a point in my life where I wouldn't say, and I'm with these massive, you know, juggernaut uh, comedians who are crushing it. And, and for Phil to come off the way he did, I remember that, that I felt like that was like 
uh, you know, I don't know how that happened because I wasn't in that place. So it, I always feel like that I try to do things that don't come easy, hmm. but that only happened later. Anyway. <laughs>